it has been a long, beautiful road, but this may very well be the last major update we get for Warhammer 2, boys and girls. Let's get some Fs in the chat. Before we get started, let me reiterate that I absolutely despise the patching process for this series. I get that the game has a skeleton crew at this point, and that it's all hands on deck for Warhammer 3, but damn, does it feel bad getting a major update maybe once or twice a year now, and then waiting two or three months after that for only some of the major bugs inevitably introduced in each patch to finally get fixed. Frankly, I think the two month gap after the Silence and the Fury has been absolutely absurd, but better late than never, I guess, and at least update 1.12.1 is addressing some seriously major problems. We don't actually have early access to either the beta nor the new patch, so at the time of making this video, it's physically impossible for me to verify any of these patch notes myself, we we'll just have to take their word at face value and test things out for ourselves over the next several days. Let's dive right in and take a look at what's being changed. First up, we have the infamous cavalry bug, and in fact, this has been such a major issue that it's getting its very own beta to try and resolve it. As a quick reminder, Heavy Cav and Monstrous Cav have been in a rather poor state since the Silence and the Fury, and that they frequently lose models getting stuck in low tier, low mass infantry. Braced infantry would take similar amounts of damage to unbraced infantry against charging horsemen, so infantry has been countercharging every single time, because screw it, why not? And because of a change to cav versus infantry interactions after the Twist in the Twilight came out, in which all infantry, but particularly great weapon and high AP shock infantry, have been dealing completely disproportionate damage during their countercharges to cav, leading to pretty ridiculous situations where mid tier great weapons out-trade elite tier monstrous cav like Mornfang, Demigriff, and Great Stags immediately on impact, despite not having halberds or spears and not being a direct counter or even remotely on the same tier as the mounted troops they were charging. Also led to situations where units like Longbeards, who have charge defense against large and are literally designed to brace and take charges standing still, would perform significantly better simply by counter-charging. Very counterintuitive, didn't really make any sense. Illogical across the board. For anyone who is unironically arguing that a 1600 gold heavily armored beast the size of a rhino should deal less damage on initial impact than a man-sized idiot with an axe who costs half as much, shame on you. It should have taken absolutely zero effort to realize that interaction was completely and totally busted. And yet I still had close to 100 comments on my initial video saying I was dumb and everything was fine, and that running directly into stampeding herds of SUV-sized war beasts, instead of holding the line and bracing, was a super duper logical feature common across all Total War games and that I should just get good. Well, guess what? No, it wasn't intended. Creative Assembly admitted it was not intended, and they're making a goddamn standalone beta to try and fix this issue. The goal of which is, and I quote, to improve the effectiveness of cavalry across the board, but especially targeting issues related to being countercharged by infantry and the general underperformance of heavy cav. The issue itself stemmed from a countercharge mechanic where the models in an infantry unit outnumber models in a cav unit, leading to many more attacks immediately hitting mounted troops on contact. This was not intentional, so they looked to tweak some interactions to reduce the damage infantry could do in that situation and make sure the cavalry impacts feel as strong as you would expect. Two major changes have been implemented to resolve this issue. Number one, entities will no longer charge attack if their charge path is blocked by a friendly entity. This means that when an infantry unit charges into cavalry, the back ranks of that infantry formation no longer get to get their charge attack bonus going as well. This reduces the damage dealt by infantry when countercharging cav, as fewer entities will get their immediate charge attack off, and that will help elite tier cav trade better with foot troops and not immediately have half their health burst into oblivion. Essentially, if you're Black Orcs or Bestigors with high AP and a decent charge bonus, the guys in the back of the formation will no longer be getting their charge bonus off, which is completely logical considering there are four or five ranks of high mass, high armor troops in front of them that would be blocking their charge. And honestly, the exact same thing should happen for Cav attempting to charge enemies through the backs of their own troops. Units should not be able to get their charge bonus off if their momentum has been arrested on contact with friendly troops. No momentum, minimal damage on impact should be true for mounted troops, should be true for foot troops. And that goes without saying, it should work 
whether it's a single formation and it's the back end of the unit trying to charge in behind the front ranks of that unit or charging into another friendly unit that is just a different regiment entirely. Either way, if your momentum has been stopped by something standing in front of you, it will block the charge and you should deal less damage on impact. It makes perfect sense. Number two, the calculation for collision damage has also been changed. Previously, collision damage was increased by the charge bonus of a unit, which meant that high charge bonus cavalry would have little difference in collision damage between braced and unbraced infantry. This meant that bracing often didn't really make much of a difference at all when calculating for collision damage, so it would nearly always be better for infantry to counter charge. Now, collision damage is just a calculation using collision power and not adding the flat charge bonus, which essentially means that charging into braced infantry will result in much lower damage on impact than charging into unbraced infantry, which reinforces how cav and infantry should ultimately interact. Cav should be favored in fights against countercharging infantry, naturally taking into consideration the tier and strength of each unit involved, while braced infantry should receive less damage than countercharging infantry, so there is an actual benefit to getting ready and receiving the charge with your formations when big mounted troops are on the way ready to make impact. Furthermore, the somewhat frustrating attempts at disengaging with Cav are also being addressed here in this patch as well. I'm sure plenty of you guys have noticed with a quick charge into zombies or goblins, even with high mass Cav like Demigriffs, you'll often have models get stuck and become unable to disengage, even though you pulled out a combat immediately on contact. Getting stuck in that situation is illogical because they're low mass infantry, your high mass Cav, and they just got sent flying. How could one or two models possibly prevent an 800 pound armored lion bird from escaping? Naturally, it shouldn't, but with the way mass works right now, that's kind of how it plays out. Well, CA are changing knockdown getting up delay, which is a random length of time a bold over entity will stay on the ground following a knockdown. These have now been increased, on average, about half a second to allow Cav a bit more time to disengage after sending a regiment flying. The delay has been changed from 0.7 to 2 seconds in the previous patch to 1 to 2.7 seconds in the beta. Without having tested any of these changes myself yet, because again, we don't have access to it at the moment, on paper, I am quite happy with what's going down. Again, this was never about making Cav better than infantry. It was about creating logical interactions between the two. Now, infantry will be much more resilient to charges when braced and in deep formations, which is logical, and they will deal much less damage when charging directly into monstrous cav that has much more momentum and much more mass. Also, logical. Perfect. We'll see how it plays out in the beta, but on paper, I really like what I'm hearing here. Now, moving past the cav situation, there were a lot of other problems introduced in the Sons and the Fury patch as well, and some of the major ones are thankfully on the agenda here, and won't be in their own separate beta. They'll be fixed around the same time this video goes live, should everything go as planned. Improvements have been made to Coatl melee animations, I know a lot of people have not been a fan of those, haven't seen that in action yet, hopefully those will look nice. They fixed a bug where the Skink Oracle on Troglodon was firing a double volley of Venom while on the move, Simple change there that will have an immediate and noticeable impact on Warhammer 2. It was bursting down Gorgons and Mammoths in like 15 seconds flat. Like it was absolutely stupid how fast it was melting stuff and it was doing it while charging into melee too. So essentially it made the Skink Oracle an auto-include that had better monster killing potential than almost anything else in the game and all because it had double the DPS it was supposed to. Go figure. Give a monster permanent double damage, it'll probably be quite strong. Still going to be a good hero with effects to double spit, but certainly will be less oppressive now. Area of effect spells no longer hit units outside of their range. Also a big one. We've seen it in many of my campaign and multiplayer videos over the last several months. If I cast a Flock of Doom or Final Transmutation, it was hitting units in basically double the radius outside of the AoE of the spell. The visual indicator remained the same as always, but enemy troops far outside the circle were still getting hit. Obvious bug. Glad to see it get addressed, as I am to see mages no longer double casting magic missiles. Now, one of the biggest problems from this patch was of course related to chariots, in particular orc boar chariots and tuskor mounted wargore chariots. They have been insanely, stupidly busted for close to two months now, to the point where the beastmen have approached like an 80% win rate 
with these chariots in competitive and like a 52% win rate without them. It kind of shows you how broken those guys are. They murder single entities, which they are not supposed to do. They murder elite cav, which they are not supposed to do. They mindlessly blend just about anything they touch, which they are obviously not supposed to do. I want to give a big shout out to Raise and Burn, also known as Kong Freakin' Lao on Discord, for fully breaking down the issue and why it was happening. The crux of it is this. Chariots deal damage with every entity that is attached to the model. That means on a Tuskord Chariot, the Rider and both mounts each have their own attack. Combined with their relatively high weapon strength and abnormal amounts of attacks, enemies tend to die rather quickly in duels, despite the fact that Chariots are not designed as a duelist unit. In the Silence and the Fury patch, Tuskor, Razorgore, and Boar Chariots were tweaked in the Battle Entities table, reducing their collision radius to about one-third of their original size. This was presumably done to make them more effective at disengaging from enemy infantry, as Chariots in general were a bit underwhelming since the game-wide changes to mass, and then what we got was less collision radius equals less enemy models in contact equals easier disengaging. An unintended consequence of this was it allowed them to stack up on top of each other in a very small AoE, allowing Chariot Goon Squads to occupy a very small spot in base contact with someone like Kolak Sunnyner and machine gun him down in seconds. This has now been fixed, so Chariots should still do well against foot troops and some dismounted characters, but they should no longer buzzsaw their way through elite knights or bars for large lords that should otherwise hard counter them. Awesome change. Now, in terms of the Beastmen campaign, I think there might be a typo in the patch notes. It says Kazrak and Morgur can no longer re-emerge after death, and I'm certainly hoping that's a typo, because Morgur the Shadow Gave absolutely should be coming back every time he dies. That's kind of his whole shtick, that no matter how many times he's slain, he just inhabits another body and then comes right back as the essence of chaos. I'm assuming they meant to put Malagor there, and that Malagor cannot return once he dies, but we'll find out, I guess, once the patch goes live. Kazrak now gives Vanguard deployment to Race Guard Chariots, which is great. But what is that that I'm hearing right now? I think I hear some sad moos coming from Torax's camp. Yeah, the infinite rampage bug is gone, gone, gone. Whoa, whoa. Which, I mean, it was clearly unintended and overpowered. But it was also kind of a niche thing that required lots of time and preparation and some luck to pull off, so I don't know. I get why CA would want to get rid of it, and I get why some people would want it to stay, but ultimately, it wasn't even supposed to be in the game, so I guess I don't really have a problem with it getting patched out, but I can see why some people might not like that change. Unfortunately, I do not see anything about Ariel and Malachus Soul Stealer not healing properly, which is problematic because it's an incredibly important spell for both characters, and there are probably quite a few more bugs floating around at the moment that I don't recall, but I'd say many of the significant issues introduced in the Sons and the Fury patch are being addressed by this update and by the Cavalry beta. So even though it took an obscenely long time to pull together, I'm glad they've been weighed, measured, and hopefully eradicated. Overall, if all the things these patch notes have said actually got fixed, I'd say this was a really good update. But it's looking like it might be the patch to end all patches in Warhammer 2's four year life cycle, and that's a bit sad. All I can say is, bring on Warhammer 3, baby. Tired of waiting for it. Hopefully it still comes out this year.